Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here. Let's talk boxing. Another really disappointing day for boxing, a black eye to the sport because Dillian White has had an adverse finding in his latest VADA test and the fight against Anthony Joshua has been called off. This is really disappointing to me. First and foremost, let me say, because I actually felt that the decline of Dillian White had been greatly exaggerated. A lot of people were saying he's become chinny all of a sudden. He got knocked out by Fury. He was stopped by Povetkin prior to that and had to avenge the defeat. I saw it a bit differently. Alexander Povetkin's uppercut would have knocked out a horse. And with regards to Tyson Fury, I think a lot of people were expecting that to be a really competitive hard fight for Fury. There were a lot of people that were accusing Fury of ducking Dillian because of the whole 20% split thing. And so they expected that he was ducking him because this could be a real handful for him. So when it was a very one-sided fight with him then getting knocked out, and he couldn't really lay a glove on Fury, people were saying, ah, he's obviously washed, because back in the day, he would have been more competitive. I just think Fury was stylistically all wrong for White and too good for White. But if you look back at his career, you'll see that he was stopped by Anthony Joshua, he was dropped by Rivas, he was dropped by Joseph Parker, he was hurt on numerous occasions by Derek Chisora. So this isn't like a Chris Eubank situation where he had this really iron chin, then he gets dropped and stopped early against Liam Smith. And if you see that happen a second time, you're going to say, I see a clear differential in the level of chin he used to have compared to the chin he has now. You can see the decline. That doesn't apply to White. White's never been that durable, but he's always had a very good defense. He's got a very dangerous trigger counter, which meant that when you're throwing punches against him, you're also vulnerable, which might mean that fighters are careful with the sort of risks they take against him. And it makes him a threat throughout the course of a fight. And I've not really seen a massive change in that. A lot of people were very critical of his fight against Franklin, but then Franklin also made Anthony Joshua look a little bit mundane because he's that sort of fighter. He's difficult to look good against. And it was a fight I thought Dillian White won eight rounds to four. Franklin was getting a lot of credit for shots that were coming off the biceps, the shoulders, the wrists, the elbows. Go watch that fight again on slow-mo. So, you know, I thought it was exaggerated, the decline, and I was looking forward to the fight. But the fact that the matter is, it cannot possibly go ahead. And there are a lot of people out there that will say, three strikes now. He's failed or had adverse findings on three separate occasions. There's no smoke without fire, certainly not on three separate occasions. Now, there'll be other people who are Dillian White fans who are pleading his innocence. And they're saying, hold on a sec. The first time around, he failed, but it was for a supplement you could buy over the counter. It was indeed traced back to that supplement. The company that makes the supplement has made changes to the composition of it. So it was down to ignorance. The second time, he was actually cleared back in 2019. And UCAD put out this statement. They said UCAD initiated an investigation in which Mr. White cooperated fully. UCAD has accepted the explanation provided by Mr. White and in accordance with UK anti-doping rules. The charge against Mr. White has been withdrawn. This would ordinarily mean that UCAD would not make any public statement in accordance with the applicable confidentiality rules to which UCAD is subject. However, since certain confidential information referring to this matter, including the fact of the initial charge, has unfortunately made its way to the public domain, UCAD and Mr. White have agreed to take the unusual step of releasing the following limited information to put an end to the speculation concerning Mr. White's status. In addition to that, Dillian White did pass a VADA test 48 hours before that UCAD test and he passed a further three VADA tests. So the fact of the matter is when they looked at that situation, they observed the evidence and they said, we're clearing him and it shouldn't have even been made public. Now, the crowd out there that was saying, hold on a sec, three times there's no smoke without fire, they'll say not making it public would have been the equivalent of sweeping it under the carpet. The fact of the matter is an adverse finding was there. But there'll be the other crowd that will say, hold on a sec, when you talk about these drug testing bodies and you talk about them like there's no way they could possibly be corrupt, you have to then accept, if they can't be corrupt against a fighter or against a promoter, you have to also accept that they're not going to be corrupt in favor of them. They're not going to seek to protect a fighter. And the reason that they've cleared the guy is because they've looked at the evidence and they genuinely believe he's innocent, so you have to accept it. Wherever it is that you stand on that, when it happens a third time, People are going to start saying, well, how unlucky is this dude, <laughs> right? So an investigation does need to be carried out. A due process, something that I've always called for, needs to be carried out. I'm not going to be one of these channels that's going to start calling out fighters because it's popular to do and people will be fuming with him just to try and raise my subscriber count or anything like that. I'm consistent. Due process. And until then, I'm going to refrain from passing judgment. But it's not looking good. And although it's not looking good, I also understand that you can't let the fight go ahead. 
and we are now seeing that the fight's not going to go ahead. So where do we go from here? Anthony Joshua could potentially fight Derek Chisora. I know they're friends from their amateur days, the old Finchley days, and they always said they would never fight each other, but Tyson Fury is friends with Dell too, and he said he wanted to give his mate an old payday. And that's why the third fight happened. Maybe that's the route they're going to go down. Let's get it done. And Derek Chisora has got a nice little retirement fund. And he's a recognisable name here in the UK. Although he's way past his best. He doesn't apply the sort of pressure that he applied. And he, re he really did take a shellacking at the hands of Tyson Fury. Who knows what sort of condition he's in now moving forward. But he's a recognisable name. And for the casuals, it may very well itch that scratch, so to speak, for a pay-per-view event. If they're not going to go down that route, there have been a lot of people that have been talking about Philip Hergovic, who is also going to fight on the undercard. In my opinion, you have to be realistic. I can't see how that fight happens at all. Philip Hergovic is a world-class fighter who is in a mandatory position to fight for a world title against Alexander Usyk. For him to take a massive risk to fight a guy who's world championship level in Anthony Joshua, he would require a massive payday because there's no title on the line. You're asking him to leave your title shot on the mat, essentially, and move into another ring against another world-class guy and potentially lose what you've been working for. It's not going to happen so easily like that. You've also got to say that even if he's willing, is Anthony Joshua willing to take on a last-minute replacement opponent as dangerous as Hergovic? What happened when they took on Andy Ruiz at a last minute, uh, at last minute's notice? And listen, Ruiz was a real threat to AJ when he was heavy and he was coming in there. I actually had a bet on Andy Ruiz. I knew it was all wrong for him if he was going to approach the fight like that. In the rematch, when I'd seen he trim down and I knew he was going to move a little bit, I actually had a bet on Anthony Joshua to win the fight. So it's all about styles making fights. The point is, though, they did not expect Ruiz to be a significant threat. That wasn't a risk take. They just overlooked Andy Ruiz. They also overlooked the threat of Alexander Usyk, to be honest with you. They did not realize he would be as dangerous as he was, and it backfired. Now, when you consider those two examples, they're going to be a lot more careful with AJ now. They're not going to look at guys like Hergovic and say, this guy was an elite-level amateur. You know, he didn't look that great against Zhang, but we don't handle him. No, they're going to look at that and say he was an elite level amateur and although he didn't look that great against Zhang, that's not necessarily signs of decline. He lost his dad. He still got through that fight. We saw what Zhang did against Joe Joyce. Hergovic is a serious guy. We can't gamble with the Deontay Wilder big money fight in Saudi Arabia. That's just what's realistic, guys. Now, when I said this on Twitter, I had a couple of people get upset. Jim, Jim in particular, a guy that used to follow me, he got really rattled. I'm talking about steam coming out the ears, veins popping out the neck, swearing at me and then blocking me. Jim, Jim, this is embarrassing, Jim. From one Greek to another Greek, I've got to tell you, this is Drobire Malaga. But moving on from Jim, he could get rattled all he wants. It's not a fight I can realistically see happening. Let me know what you think, though. Maybe you feel that they're both willing to take that risk. It would be a huge risk. I can't see it happening. If it's not Chisora, perhaps Gerald Washington, that's not a fight that interests me at all. He's been stopped in five of his last seven. He we last fought a year and a half ago. He's just not the guy he used to be, Gerald Washington. And he was never amazing, but he was a good athlete, good technical boxer. But when you'd apply any sort of pressure on him, he would fold. With the exception of one or two occasions, he seemed to, to hold down and bite down on that gum shield a little bit against Amir Mansour and also Robert Hellenius. But the fact of the matter is, if shots are landing, big shots on him consistently, he tends to fold. And I can't see him blasting more than a couple of rounds against Anthony Joshua. The other potential is that they look at Dempsey McKean. The thing is, Dempsey is a southpaw. And although he's not, you know, a world beater, he is a good C-level guy who's trying to catapult himself to B-level, undefeated, uh, Southport, and he's not been preparing for a Southport AJ, and if he beats Dempsey McKean, he wouldn't be going into a fight against a Southport with Deontay Wilder. So it's not even good prep for Wilder. So again, it's a bit of a risk. I think what we're going to see is Derek Chisora stepping up. If not, I think they'll go with Gerald Washington. Either way, I think AJ will remain active. You've also seen the likes of Michael Hunter, Martin Bacoli, Andy Ruiz say they're willing to step in. For the same reasons of Hergovic, I can't see them taking on Bacoli or Andy Ruiz at late notice. Far too big a risk. Hunter's a possibility because he's been inactive. I doubt he's the guy he used to be. However, he has been sparring. He is said to be sharp. And the thing is with Michael Hunter, he's a very different type of opponent to Dillian White, who's a bit of a plodder. 
Hunter isn't as heavy handed, but he's very quick at entering that pocket. So what you're preparing for, your timing has to be different. The way you're going to set up a big shot against a guy like Hunter is different to how you're going to set up against Dillian White. Again, it's a potential banana skin. So I can't see them taking those risks. Let me know what you think. How do you think they're going to move from here? What do you think is going to happen with Dillian White? If he has had an adverse finding and it's another ban, you'd have to say at his age, this could be spelling the end of the career of Dillian White. Let me know what you think, ladies and gents. Don't forget to hit a stiff jab on the like button, a right cross on the subscribe button, and an uppercut on the notifications button. Thanks for watching. Chat to you soon. Take care. God bless. Regime. The guy is from my life.